Welcome back everyone, it's Cool Kid Croc, and welcome to episode 4 of Akenshi Let's Struggle Season 2. In this episode, we got Skeleton Fox on his way to go to the Nomad Camp, as we need some skeleton repair kits, as most of our party are all wiped out right now. Last episode, we ran into a, maybe a three too many bandit attacks, so everybody's gotta rest in some camp beds and get healed up. Now luckily though, Skeleton Fox was just near the Nomad Camp, and I went there to look for skeleton repair kits, couldn't find any, or wasn't even really any med kits, you know, they had some goats and such, but I didn't need that. This forced me to basically make the choice, I gotta go to the way station instead, like it's the closest spot that'll probably have some, and for the time being we'll just have to heal up. Last episode, Pi lost a leg, but we did have some spare legs for, uh, we brought from the hub, so we were able to give him a leg right away and we wouldn't have to carry him around or have him slow us down. Now Skeleton Fox ran by a group of starving bandits, but he's still fast enough to just outrun them. So he was able to make it over to a way station and there I made sure he grabbed as many skeleton repair kits as possible. I think I grabbed like six or something. You know, enough to keep us going for the next little bit and then sent him to make his way back to our party in the outskirts of Shem. Now while we had everybody getting healed up, a black ninja decided to walk by, and behind him was an entire group of black ninjas. This wasn't good at all, and <laughs> everybody was still pretty much like either one hit or two hit. This would lead to the fight breaking out between Harold and his group and a giant group of black ninjas. Now of course they didn't stand too much of a chance, meaning us, like uh, we all went down pretty fast and everybody was all one hit and the black ninjas are very fast. So it's kind of hard to block a lot of her attacks. So we ended up going down again with even more wounds. Luckily though, everybody was at least bandaged from last time. So when they woke up in the morning, nobody was dying or in critical. Skeleton Fox got back and he could repair all the skeletons that I had in my party. As well as all the robotic limbs. And then, and with that, waited for the other people to heal up. This is when we had yet another attack from the black ninjas oh well what a surprise yeah they're still lingering around the area and caught wind of us again so they came over and cleared out our entire group again knocking out everyone just after we almost had everybody ready to be healed <laughs> and on their fucking way oh well you know we at least get some toughness experience and defense xp but it was pretty terrifying even when we got up you know they'd come back and start hit us again just beat us up even more so eventually though i figured out we could just sneak and that would keep everybody as low profile as possible and we'd be able to heal up people put them in beds and such and hopefully by the morning get everybody ready to leave this fucking camp as We've been here for like days now, and it, our whole goal is just to build an outpost. We also had a new problem coming our eyes. We had run completely out of our food rations. We had no more food left, and this wasn't good, but just as that happened, a trader walked by, so I had somebody limp over to him, and by trading with him, we had just about enough food for maybe like another day or so, and then a few more med kits. But everybody was about healed up and ready to leave. I dismantled the remaining beds and went to go pick them all up, and the group set forth on into Shem. Now it was daylight when they had left, looking for open lands to build on, and it wouldn't be until late into the night. But they did make it out to the middle of Shem where there was a lot of nice land to build. So first I found some basic resources, you know, there's copper around, there's some iron, as well as on the map it wasn't too too far from everything and it was in a pretty good location I felt like. Awesome, now I'm setting up the gate. Now I know I can set up the walls to be a lot more efficient and keep the bandits out and uh, you know stall them but I really just want a nice clean design you know I want it just to look nice <laughs> so I made this cool little box just a simple square and I, I think it looks really good you know the first thing is in the top right I want the stone mine as well as stone processor that way we can make some building materials as well as a storage crate for the stones and building materials that we'll be making after I want the iron refinery to process iron ore and iron plates and with a storage of those down as well as a copper storage is basically all the, the essentials we need and I can hit confirm. And also make sure that you know we get the stone mine built first, we get the 
processor build first because you don't want to build those last or run out of materials before you build them. With that though, we can start giving people jobs to start mining, processing things, building, and things are going pretty smoothly. A pack of drifters have moved in and, and we're starting to get about halfway done with a wall. While Harold's group set up a base, I decided it'd probably be a good idea to go get some more recruits. While we had quite a few people, it wouldn't be exactly enough to be manning as much as I wanted, so we definitely needed some more help. So I sent them over to the way station, but there wasn't anyone there that uh, was from the Adventurer's Guild, so I sent them to the outpost instead where Adventurer's Guild is. That's when I could see Royito was flashing red and I needed to go see what was happening. There's a giant group of fucking hungry bandits running by him, <laughs> and obviously this was of great concern, and I decided we're, we're not fighting them today. Enough of them had already funneled around the lake and were chasing Raido, so I had him go back to the base, that way that they could fight the group, and it was about pretty even in numbers, you know? That giant group would just be probably too much trouble for us, and I didn't want to go through it. But after clearing the starving bandits, Harold would head into the outpost where he could find a person from the Adventurers Guild. Now, this is a mod, so they'll send a pack of people or in this case, hivers, to my base for 5k, and then I can recruit them for 5k each. Stocked up on a little bit of food, and then head back to the base. Meanwhile, we're still dealing with hungry bandit attacks left and right, but nobody's getting too damaged. On the bright side, <laughs> well not so bright side, I noticed we set up our base just on the outskirts of Venge. We gotta be careful with our Greenlanders not to send them over there to get fucking blasted with beams of light. But once Harold made it back, I went to go set up a food storage, that way you could put the food in there, as well as a windmill, that way we could get some energy source going through the base. But we're starting to get some things put together too, and we had a few upcoming events, you know? Recruits delivery, bandit demands, materials, and with this I finally decided on a faction name, Hair Young Empire. <laughs> Pretty clever, right? Eh? So Harold can call all his underlings the hair youngs i mean i i'd love to see someone else come up with something more clever i think it's pretty good fortunately though like one second later the bandit demands um <laughs> arrived before anything else of course and there's a good pack of dust bandits inside of our base we wouldn't be paying no two cats though and this would of course start a huge fight between harold and his group and the dust bandits i made sure everybody's backpacks were unequipped and even though there's quite a bit of dust bandits, we were able to clear out quite a few of them with our higher tier units. You know, we had some people going down, but quite a few people were blocking hits at this point and doing pretty fair against them. Harold in particular was doing great other than for when the dust bandit hit him with the, you know, good old 360 palm. But, you know, he was doing pretty fair. Same with everyone else. You know, we had about half our people go down before we were able to clear out the rest of the dust bandits. And with that done, we could finally heal up and the bandit demands were defeated. So beside the food storage, I put down the camp beds. That way we could just put down people there to sleep for now. And the recruit delivery arrived in the morning. Unfortunately, they are missing like a few members of her guild and then the recruits. Uh, this is a glitch that happens sometimes. The last time they showed up, it crashed my game, so I'm guessing that's why. <laughs> it's a lot struggle, okay? But either way, we got the windmill built, and this meant we could upgrade our stone processor, that way we get building material faster, as well as start to build some other things that use power. This is when another group of bandits had arrived, the Swamp Ruffians. I don't know why they came here if they're from the Swamp. This is way far out from the swamp but either way there's a huge fucking pack of them and i wasn't i wasn't feeling it but either way we had to defend our ground and show them that we wouldn't just let them you know stomp all over us so even though it basically looked like a blink of an eye and everybody was wiped out we at least got some experience out of it luckily though the swamp ruffians just walked right out though once they're done beating us they had no uh interest in stealing anyone or any of our shit so i go back to building now the wall was done so i got the two ramps and two turrets on each side of the gate set up as well as a corpse furnace the base was really starting to come along and it was looking pretty good so i decided it'd be time to send harold to mourn here we could probably get some recruits seeing as the adventurers guild didn't want to bring our recruits last time we won't want to be giving them 
our money anytime soon. Luckily, Harold can make it to the Morn without running into anything, but our base would run into something, a giant group of white eyebrows. With this, we had to defend our honor and try and fight them, but they aren't as easy and they're really fast and good at martial arts, so everybody there went down. They'd also linger around for a bit, just standing about until everybody was healed up, so that meant we couldn't heal up because they'd knock us out every time. So we couldn't do anything except go back to Morn. Luckily though, Harold ended up walking into a skeleton unit, and when talking to the skeleton unit, we learned that its name is B02, a descendant from B01. We also recruited a Greenlander to name Ubuwakos, and I wanted to get about two more recruits, so one skeleton I named Erokiv, and the other one I named Wet Axo. <laughs> That name sounds like shit when I say it out loud, fuck. Either way, we had the group assembled, and we are pretty much ready to get out of Morn, head back to the base, and luckily the white eyebrows were even leaving too. This is when, probably 10 seconds after, I see that we're flashing red, and there's a giant beak thing behind us, I mean fucking huge. So, trying to run away from this thing, Wet Axo gets one hit knocked out. So I decided it'd probably be best to get Harold and Ibuokos back to Morn before, uh, you know, they get knocked out of and eaten alive. The big thing did beat up B01 and Erocative, but at least they wouldn't be eaten alive by it. Taking a look at its stats, it had over 600 health in each limb, and I knew we had to get the fuck out of there. Now luckily, when making them all run at the top speed, he went after Harold instead of Ubuokos, thank god, because Harold was just fast enough to, you know, just make it out of the fucking grasp of its neck when he went to go attack him. So there's a group of tech hunters at the front gate, so they'll be the best way to win this battle. Lead the beak thing to the gate and have him attack the tech hunters. Meanwhile, I sent Ubuokos and Harold out to go heal up our robots, and a fucking giant group of like just mass numbers of beak things now, probably a dozen of them. So I sent Harold and Ubuokos into the city walls far in that way. We leave the tech hunters of the townsfolk to attack these beak things. Once the giant beast was finally slain after minutes of fighting, we went over and I decided we couldn't just leave it there. Harold wanted this fucking beak thing, so we patched it up, gave it some first aid just enough so that it would uh, not bleed out, and then went on our way. First, we had to go heal up our robotic members of our party. You know, Erokative was almost dying at this point, but luckily he held on just long enough for us to revive him. With that though, we now had a giant fucking monster on us, and there was a pack of bone dogs that went by, but they didn't fight us. Luckily, because if anyone knocks out Ubuokos, and this beak thing goes back alive without us taming it we'll probably be fucked <laughs> that's where i decided to end the episode off if you guys like this episode make sure you leave it a like and subscribe to the channel for more content i really appreciate all the feedback you guys have been giving me in the comments section and such feel free to join my discord server if you want to and the only other thing i did in game was i renamed the fort to fort Harold as it's not complete yet, but it's pretty much getting there. Either way, hope you guys liked this episode, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.